following up if you've indicated that you're having some sound issues. But welcome. We have a smaller group today. Um, don't have as many slides, so that means you'll have plenty of time to ask questions. And if they're technical in nature, Nicole can walk you through if you're having you know, trouble using Nova or signing on. Um, Nicole will also have an update on programming uh, later in the presentation. So hopefully we'll cover all your Nova needs today and uh, looking forward to the questions, comments, um, as well as the PowerPoint. So let's begin. So we'll have a technical update. Some uh, We'll talk about budget revisions, fourth quarter expense reporting, target spending, the closeout of 16-17 funds, 18-19 uh, member budget and work plan, and three-year plan submission. I think we're also going to cover, I remember we had a slide on data and accountability funding. We'll cover that today as well. So feel free to type in the chat if you have a question or you want us to cover another topic we're not covering today. Uh, we have plenty of time, so uh, feel free to use the chat. So let's get a technical update. So Nicole's going to, I'm going to turn over to Nicole in just a few seconds to talk about some of the technical updates. But because of these technical um, upgrades or fixes that we're doing, we're giving you all, it is, I feel like Ellen or Oprah, we're giving you all extensions. So, uh, you know, look under your seat and you'll find a 30-day extension <laughs> for fourth quarter reporting. So your expense reporting and certification has been extended 30 days. Your 18, 19 member budget and work plan submission and certification has been extended 30 days. But your Q1 expenses for 18, 19 is still December 1st. So um, hopefully that's good news. Nicole, do you have an update on the te technical fixes that are going on that resulted in the deadline extension? Yes, yeah, so we have experienced some technical issues with Nova. Uh, the first big one that, that has impacted many, many people is the budget revision issue. Um, in order to do a budget revision, your consortia lead has to uncertify your budget. But the but there's been problems with being able to uncertify the budget, um, and hence uh, we have not been able to do budget revision. Uh, I, the, the system developers have informed me that they will fix it by today. Um, so hopefully by the end of the day today, it will the um, it will be fixed. And on Monday morning, I can log in, everything will be fine, and I'll be able to send a message through the Nova system letting everyone know that the budget revision issue has now been resolved, and you can go ahead and proceed with your budget revision. Another technical issue that we've experienced is that um, we've recently launched a, an update to the system called the Admin Console, and with that launch, there were some editing rights that were lost for users that uh, were uh, that were designated as a member contact, and so we have had some cases where member contacts are unable to edit or enter information. Um, and as as you know, member contacts are supposed to have that ability to enter and edit the expenditure reports. That issue is also supposed to be fixed by today. Um, so hopefully by Monday morning, I'll be able to send a message and let everybody know that, that, that those two issues are resolved and we can um, get back to moving forward with, um, with all of our reporting. Thank you, Nicole. So combined with Nicole's update and the deadline extension, you should all feel very comfortable this weekend and not worrying about getting your fourth quarter or your member budgets and work plans in. We're going to give you plenty of time. The fixes um, should be in place by early next week. And hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, we all move forward um, into our 1819 budget and um, we can do final reporting for fourth, fourth quarter and move on with that. So let's. Uh, don't see any questions. Is oh okay. So Nora has a question. 
is the deadline for Q4 October 1st now. Yeah, I, I mean, that would be for members. So if we were extending 30 days, Nora, so September 1st was the original deadline for member submission of fourth quarter, then it would be October 1st. And then we're hoping that that can be uh, certified by the consortia, hopefully by the end of the month or November 1st. Uh, we don't want to go too d uh, deep into that. So yeah, you're right. So let's see. Okay. So just to confirm, and maybe this was, I was anticipating Nora's question. So it's now October 1st for fourth quarter. It's now um, October 30th for member budget and work plan submissions. But Q1 expense reporting is still going to be December 1st. Okay, and then some deadline reminders. I, I did tell you we're going to talk a little bit about um, data and accountability funds. So these were funds that uh, you probably haven't thought about in a long time, but they are funds that were allocated and tracked in the old Cancer's Office, MIS, WebEx, whatever you call it, system, the old system. And because uh, we haven't been using that system, we've been moving into NOVA. But data and accountability funds were the only funds that we didn't move over into NOVA. So what I can do is maybe towards the end of November or early December, I can resend out all your passwords because I think probably a majority of you have forgot what your password is. Who knows even if your certifying fiscal person in the old system is accurate so you'll have to do probably a, a little bit of housekeeping, uh, update all that information, because if you are going to do a budget revision for the data and accountability funds, you would have to uh, do that in the system before December 17th. If you're going to do a work plan change, you would have to submit that work plan via email to our office with the appropriate signature. And so those work plans are on the uh, website under your consortia. They're also in NOVA under other documents. So all that information is available for you to look at. Uh, hopefully you're following the work plan and spending the money according to your budget. If you do have to make changes, you can. But we do have a cutoff of December 17th. And all activities must cease by the end of the year, December 31st. Um, then you'll be required to go into the system and file your final expenditure report by the end of January of next year and do a closeout of, uh, close out in February. And if there's any leftover money, we'll invoice you to recapture that um, and put it back in the general fund. So let's see if there was a few questions. So Mary Ann said the 1819 budget and work plan template has not been placed into Nova, correct? Uh, no, Nicole, are we gonna we're gonna cover that today, right? Um, yes, but to answer Marianne's question, we the developers are still developing uh, that ability to enter your eighteen nineteen budget and work plan, um, and that's why we've um, added the thirty day extension for that because that is not available in the in Nova yet. It will be soon, hopefully in the next few weeks. It will be available, um, but they are still building it. And, and also, we do need to close out the quarter four reports before we can really move into 18-19 um, budget planning. So it kind of makes sense. We've had this issue with the budget revision, which has impacted a lot of people's abilities to be able to submit their quarter four report. So we've extended that deadline. That kind of then there's a domino effect, which then affects the 1819 um, budget process because uh, we need the information from the quarter four report to determine what your 1819 budget will look like because your remaining balance from 1718 will then roll into to be a part of your 1819 budget. Uh, so these glitches have caused a little bit of a domino effect with the deadlines, and, and that's why we've pushed everything out about 30 days. And just to answer uh, Jock's question, 
Uh, the 30-day extension applies to both members and consortia. So if the members have an additional 30 days to submit their reports, then the consortia has an additional 30 days to uh, certify those reports. So that means we're giving them a 60-day extension. Isn't that right, Nicole? Yes. Yes. Technically, if we're counting days. So um, a couple other questions here. So. What Nicole's saying is, let's get that fourth quarter report done. Let's get all the budget revisions done. We're giving you like a 60-day extension on the 1819 um, work plans and budget. So let's not worry about those right now. Let's worry about getting all those fourth quarter changes, carryover, budget revision, certification. Let's get that all done because that all feeds into the 1819. Um, work plan and budget because that carryover is critical to what you're going to be budgeting for next year. So we really have to finalize those uh, carryover numbers, and that all has to do with that fourth quarter report. So uh, let's see. Mary Ann says, "Will we need to make a budget change for the data? Oh, we will need to make a budget change for data and accountability report. We'll need to submit a request for a change in advance, like we used to." So Marianne, all you have to do is go into the system and uh, using your password, you can make that in, uh, change in the system. You don't have to request it. We, You do need the password though. So um, we'll be sending that out to everyone before that deadline, probably in November. Um, if you need it sooner, just contact our office through TAP and we can get you those passwords if you wanna do it. Uh, sooner rather than later. And then Annabelle says, when are changes to the work plan due for data and accountability? Well, you can do it anytime between now and December 17th. I really wouldn't wait till December 17th because things might pile up. So if you're ready, you can submit it now. Uh, just make sure on the work plan you get the appropriate signatures and um, you know, you show us where the change is made in that work plan, and then you upload it into Nova. Um, so you want to make sure uh, the public has a chance to look at the revised data accountability work plan. Okay. And Marianne does have her password. Good deal. Okay, next slide. Okay, so Nicole, do you want to talk about, I mean, you kind of covered this last webinar, but just quickly go through the next few slides on the uh, version updates, and then I think that leads into the budget revision slide. Yes, so very quickly. So um, as we launch updates into uh, Nova, the site version number will change. And so any as you navigate into any page into Nova, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, you'll see the Chancellor's Office logo, and you'll see the site version. I've, I've highlighted it here. Um, this is actually a link. So if you um, if you click on the site version, it's a link that kind of then will take you to uh, the Nova release notes. Will then which will then display what releases and bug fixes have occurred. Uh, and this is a good way for you to stay up to date. If, if you have a question or if you're curious or if you're waiting for something, you could check the the version number and check the release notes and, and see if we've we've gotten to that. Um, um, Oh, and you can always contact us as well. But this would be a, a very quick and easy way for you to um, get that information on your own. Um, and then also this next slide, I just wanted to show very quickly how to do budget revisions. Um, this has, again, this has not been fixed yet. We're still waiting. It's supposed to happen today. But once um, this issue has been fixed, if you need to complete a budget revision, your consortia primary contact will need to navigate to the budget and work plan page for your agency um, and click on the uncertify button, which is on the top right side of the screen. And I also very quickly wanted to make a quick note. Once we get the budget revision issue resolved and, and folks can get in and, and adjust their carryover amount and move funds around between the object codes as, as they need to, um, one thing of importance here is to um, make sure that the amount that you have entered for your 16-17 carryover is accurate. 
Um, as you know, we launched NOVA kind of in the middle of the 16, 17 year. So we had a year of reporting in the old system. And we brought in the remaining balance into NOVA in the form of carryover, which then became a part of your 17, 18 budget. Moving forward into the 18, 19 year, it will be a little bit trickier or more difficult to adjust your 16, 17 carryover. So you'll want to make sure that you check your records, check your books, and make sure that you have that identified as the correct amount. Um, and if not, to um, get into the system and do a budget revision and, and do that as soon as possible. Once the system developers launch the update um, with the ability to enter 18, 19 budgets, it's going to be a little trickier to adjust your 16, 17 carryover. So um, we will continue to communicate that, but I just wanted to um, make sure everyone is aware of, of that. Okay, and that's all I have um, for that piece. I believe Neil had some things to talk about expense reporting. Thanks, Nicole. Yeah, and just a reminder, like Nicole was saying, you know, if your members are adjusting their carryover, you as consortia leads, if you are a consortia lead, you have the responsibility to make sure that that's accurate. Um, make sure that some fiscal accounting person at that member district is certifying that that carryover is accurate because you also, as the consortia lead or director, have to certify that that's accurate. So just make sure there's communication between if you're the consortia lead and the member, if they are going to do that revision, because everyone in the consortia has to certify that. So. There should be some dialogue, whether it's at a public meeting or something like that, that that kind of information is communicated um, so everyone knows so it's not a surprise when they have to certify something like that. So just keep that in mind. I don't think everyone is redoing their 16, 17 carryover, but we do have a few examples or cases going on, as Nicole indicated. So let's quickly, I'll give my two cents on fourth quarter expenses, and then Nicole's going to um, walk you through it again and see if you have any questions. But we did have a lot of questions on people entering negative numbers. Um, and, and in fact, we did have a lot of members that had negative numbers. Maybe that has to do that when we had the budget revision issue people were entering in numbers, but they couldn't revise the budget. So hopefully that will be fixed. But we do, going forward, once the budget revision process is fixed, you can't be running negative balances. So please remember to, to use that budget revision uh, process once it comes on board um, later today or, or when you do it next week. We do not want to see negatives. It, it's just not a good practice, at least for our funding and the NOVA system. Um, yeah, expenditure reports cannot be submitted if expenditures exceed the allocated amount for a given object code, no negative balances. So let's just a reminder on the expense reporting. I'm going to turn it back to Nicole to walk you through it. Thanks, Neil. Um, and I, I did see a quick question about the 30-day the extension. Um, and yes, Jock, to answer your question, the 30-day extension applies to both the member reporting and the consortia lead certification. So con the consortia lead has an additional 30 days from the, the updated member due date. So essentially, you have 60 additional days. Okay, so moving into reporting, um, in these next few slides, I'm going to go over how to complete the expenditure report in NOVA. This is a review for many of you. We've, we've kind of gone through these slides, so I'm, I'm going to go a little quick. But if, of course, if you have questions, please um, enter it in the chat box, and I can definitely pause and, and go over information again. So to access the expenditure reports, once you log into NOVA, select AEBG under funds and then click on Fiscal Reporting, which is located on the left blue navigation pane. This will then bring you to the Fiscal Reporting dashboard. 
And from here, you can scroll through the list to find your consortium, or you can use the filter located at the top of the screen to start typing in your member agency name or your consortium name, and it'll, it'll start to auto automatically pull up. You can also search for previously submitted reports by using the fiscal year and period filters that are located at the top of the screen. So before you click into your consortia to complete your report, be sure that quarter four is selected under the period filter. And I, I've highlighted uh, that information uh, on this screenshot. So once you click on your consortium, it will then direct you to this page where you will find all of your member agency's quarterly reporting templates. And you'll also notice at the top of the page, a summary is displayed, which shows the submittal status of prior quarters and the cert certification status of the current reporting period. And as you scroll down um, the screen, you'll find all of the member agency expenditure reporting templates. And so you'll find the uh, uh, reporting template for your agency, and that's where you will uh, complete your report. One thing I want to note is that if your budget is not in certified status, your member agency reporting template will not appear in this area. So if you're navigating to this area and you cannot find the uh, reporting area for your agency, it's likely because your budget is still in draft status or it's still in submitted status. It has not yet been certified by your consortia primary contact. So if that's the case, your consortia primary contact will need to certify the budget. And then um, once that's done, it will appear in this area. Um, so to, uh, to complete the quarter four report, you'll enter your expenditure information under the Q4 tab under the column labeled year to date expenditure. Um, and we've had a few questions about this. The, your expenditure report is a cumulative total and it's your year to date total from July 1 through the end of the reporting period. So in the case of quarter four, it would be from July 1 um, through June 30th of 2018. Uh, if your expenditures fall below the spending targets, you will be required to enter an explanation before the report can be submitted. So if your expenditures fall below the 60% target for quarter four, uh, a narrative box will appear requiring um, you to enter your corrective action plan. Um, it's it's um, it's an um, explanation and also action steps of what you plan to do to bring your expenditures back up to uh, to meet the targets. And also, I want to note that only member representatives have the ability to submit the report. So. We have had some issues where folks cannot access the submit button. Uh, the first thing you'll want to do is make sure that you are a your user role in Nova is that of member representative. Uh, the second thing you'll want to check is that um, if your expenditures have fallen below the target that you've completed that box, um, that will also prevent you from um, accessing the submit button if that's not filled out. Um, and another issue um, that we've come across um, is uh, expenditures in a given object code cannot decrease from the previous report that was submitted. So if this is the case, you will need to revise your quarter three report to reflect this change. Otherwise, um, your report information will not save. So we have had some instances in which folks are not able to uh, save their quarter four report. And, and usually the reason for that is because in one or more of the object codes, their, their expenditures have actually decreased um, because of um, uh, they've backed out expenses or they've moved funds around. Um, um, for whatever the reason is, the expenditures have decreased. So if that's the case, you have to go back and correct your quarter three report. To do so, the certifying officer certifying authority for your consortia who is listed at the top of the uh, fiscal reporting page will need to uncertify the uh, quarter three reports. Uh, once that happens, you will be able to unsubmit your report so that you can revise your uh, expenditures accordingly, resubmit it, and then your consortia certifying authority will then need to recertify the quarter three reports. Um, so again, your quarter four report will not save until this issue has been corrected. 
And also, if your consortia is in the process of um, fixing a quarter three report for any of the members, uh, for, for it does impact the ability for the other members to be able to submit their quarter four report. Um, it's just the way the workflow occurs in NOVA and, and, and the logic of, of how things work. So if you're a member and you're unable to access the submit button for quarter four, it could also be an issue of you, there is another member who has uh, is working on revising their quarter three report and the quarter three reports are, are in the uncertified status, which then prevents any other reports to be submitted for quarter four. Uh, so those are just some things to be aware of. Uh, you know, we're going to be continuously working on the system. Um, that's the order of operations or the workflow that exists right now. Um, I think as we move forward, we will continue to look at these things uh, and look at ways that we can better streamline the, the these operations, but this is how it, it functions right now. So then um, when the expenditure report is ready to be submitted, the member representative should click on the Submit Quarter 4 button, which is located on the bottom right side of the screen in their reporting card. Um, and again, the member representative is the only user role that can submit the expenditure reports. Member contacts should have the ability to enter and edit information, but only the member representative can submit. And also, I just want to remind you that we are aware of an issue um, that is preventing some member contacts from being able to enter and edit information. That should be fixed by today. So hopefully by Monday, if you are a member contact that is experiencing that issue, uh, that issue will be resolved. And so once the member representative submits their report, Status will change to submitted, as you can see on the lower right side of the screen. And once the report is submitted, the submit button then changes to display unsubmit quarter four report. So this button is where you can toggle between submit and unsubmit as necessary. Also, just a reminder that member representatives can unsubmit and revise their report up until the time that the consortia primary contact certifies the expenditure reports for the consortia. Once the consortia primary contact certifies the reports, it, it, it locks it down. So you will need to work with your consortia, your primary contact or your lead to uncertify the reports if you need to unsubmit a report and make a change. And once all of the member reports are submitted, the consortia primary contact will then have the ability to certify the reports by clicking on the Certify Quarter 4 Report button, which is located at the top right side of the screen, as shown in this screenshot. The consortia lead is not able to certify the reports for that quarter until all reports have been submitted. So at, at the consortia level, it's one certification for all of the reports for that um, expenditure period. And uh, this screenshot shows the expenditure report certified at the consortia level. So you'll notice that the certify button then ha has now changed to display uncertify quarter four report. This is how you toggle back and forth between certifying and uncertifying if you need to. And again, if a report needs to be adjusted after it has been submitted and certified, the consortia primary contact, or um, more specifically, the certification authority who is the individual that's listed on this page, will need to click on the uncertify button to be able to unsubmit and revise report. We do have instances in which we have um, consortias that have multiple users that are identified as a primary contact. Uh, right now, the way the system works is that it will pull the first primary contact that's listed to be the certification authority for the fiscal report. If you have a situation in which it is the wrong individual that displays as a certification authority, please contact us um, and I can help you reorder uh, the list of your users so that the appropriate person will show as a certification authority. Right now, for expenditure reporting, we only have the ability to designate one person as a certification authority. So if you do have a situation where you have co-chairs or co-leads, 
you will um, have to choose one person to fill that role for now. However, we are working with the system developers on a better process for this. Um, and, and hopefully in the next few months, we will have the ability to have more than one person um, with the functionality to serve as the certification authority for the expenditure report. So before we move on, I will look at, uh, I'll check the questions. Uh, so we have a couple of questions about uh, clarify expenditure degrees. Nicole. Nicole. Yes. I've taken care of most of the questions. The only one that I did not take care of, Marianne asked, there seems to be a programming issue with percentage and indirect costs. Members are reporting 5% but are told the cost is more than 5%. Um, is that a 17-18 issue that they, with the programming of the 5% or is there another issue related to indirect? Uh, so I'm trying to understand the question. If the question is that um, it's still highlighted in red, um, the the cap on the five percent that rule does not apply until eighteen nineteen. However, we've developed that flag or that functionality early, so it does show in your seventeen eighteen budget if your indirect rate exceeds the five percent, it will be it will display in red. But you can disregard that until we move into the eighteen nineteen year, and that's when the five percent cap applies. So I hope that I'm answering the question. I'm not sure if that was what the question was or um yeah there could be you know another scenario it could be if the member is the consortia lead and they're holding funds we don't want to see them combine the member indirect on the same line as the consortia admin which would go over the five percent so you got to be careful if you're in a consortia and you're a member that has program money, but you also do consortia level activity, make sure you don't combine on the indirect line your member indirect as well as your consortia admin. They should be really in separate areas so it doesn't show that you're at 10% for your indirect. That could be another scenario that maybe Marianne's not. Um, concerned about, but it is an issue that could crop up if you're combining those on that one line called indirect. Anything else, Nicole, that you can think of on indirect that might be an issue? Um, I've been asked to uh, go over the process. Um, if expenditures in the current report have decreased than in the previous quarter's expenditures, um, there's we have had situations in which um, the budget office has has changed how they're coding expenditures, um, or they're they're charging expenditures to uh, to another program or funds, and so as a result, uh, the expenditures then decrease in that object code. If that's the case, um, you will need to go back to the prior quarter and uh, adjust that report to reflect that change, and and uh, because the way NOVA is built is that expenditures can only go up, they cannot decrease. If you do have that issue, then your consortia certifying authority will need to go back and uncertify the quarter three report. The member agency will then need to unsubmit their report, revise their expenditure report accordingly, and then resubmit their report. Once the report has been resubmitted, then the consortia certifying authority will then need to certify the quarter three reports again, which then kind of closes out the process um, and which then should allow you to move forward into your quarter four reporting. Okay, so Nicole, another question, and it could, well, it's kind of related to this. So Crystal and Melissa asked, if a member needs to do a budget revision, does it matter if they have submitted their Q4 to me, who Crystal is the consortia lead or not? In, in other words, I, I am able to uncertify um, as a consortia lead so they can do a budget revision whether they've submitted their fourth quarter or not. Does that make sense? 
Yes. From what I understand and how it's been explained to me by the developers is that that should not impact anything. If you if they've already submitted their report and they have some negative balances, um, you can leave that alone. You should be able to go back and uncertify their budget and adjust their budget as necessary um, and then recertify their budget. It, it should not negatively impact the report in any way. Their report should still remain in submitted status. Um, but if you do have any issues or if that's not how it works, please do let me know. Um, but that's how, that's from my understanding that that should not be an issue. Okay, and then here's a question from Inland. The system is aggregating prior year funds, which pushes the 5% over the cap and shows up as red. I think, I don't know if that's really happening. So when you bring in prior years, you can claim the approved indirect rate or the 5%, whichever is less, on that total pot of money. So if you're carrying over 16, 17, 17, 18, and you have the new funding, 18, 19, you can take your member indirect on that total pot. So it wouldn't, as long as your um, amount uh, of or percentage is 5% or the approved, you really wouldn't be over going over that amount. I think what Nicole explained why it's showing up in red is because the programmers were putting this in early, but it really only applies to that 1819 budget that you're going to be submitting. Um, right, Nicole? Yes. Okay. And then the follow up question by Inland there's no separate place to put the indirect. So there is an indirect line. Nicole, maybe you can cover um, how they go about creating indirect and how that line appears on the screen in Nova so they can put indirect expenses in. Yeah, you know, I don't have any screenshots for that right now, unfortunately. I'm sorry. But when you do um, create your budget and you create a budget card for expenditures, there is a drop down window to select the object code and there should be a line there should be an option for indirect right okay and then if if there is a um consortia admin that you want to add just put it on a separate line item so like one year i've seen some consortia use object code 7000 to put their admin indirect, or you could just spread your admin indirect, I mean, admin, um, consortia admin across the various object codes. But what we don't want to have happen is that you put everything into the indirect line item, your consortia admin and your member indirect, because then it definitely will be over that 5%. Um, I think we've covered the indirect and I think Nicole you did cover Devin's question uh, it sounds like that is um, okay so Inland saying there's no separate no way to separate the fiscal agent from the member if they are the semi agent agency correct but you do when you do certify for your expenses you are saying that you didn't go over the approved or the uh, maximum of 5%, and you are certifying that you didn't go over the 5% admin cap if you are reporting consortia expenditures. And we'll get a little bit into this, I think, for 1819 budgeting. Nicole, do they have the ability to designate which are consortia related expenses or budgets? Isn't that a feature that will be coming on uh, next year? Yes, there is a checkbox in the um, in the budget cards that allows you to uh, indicate if that's a consortia level um, expenditure. We will have another webinar and go through screenshots for your 1819 budgets. Uh, the issue we ran into is it simply was not available or or built for us. Um, to show today, but there definitely are plans that once that is live or launched in the system that we will have another webinar 
to go through step-by-step, screen-by-screen of um, entering your 1819 budget. Great. Thanks, Nicole. Okay, I'm going to quickly go over the targets. You've seen this before. Um, and this will lead into the closeout of 1617 funds because they're related. So on the targets, if you want to continue to spend down your 1617 carryover all the way to the end of the year when the funds expire at December 31st, 2018, you'll need to do a corrective action plan in NOVA, and that'll be on the uh, expenditure report page for Q4. It'll be at the bottom. Uh, this will be a process that you'll do every year if you want to bring uh, old money forward for an extended six-month period. Because we're really, with the target spending, we're really trying to target um, adult ed funds for two years. And so if you want to go that extra six months, which we used to allow you to do two and a half years, we'd like just an explanation kind of in a corrective action plan form that says, why do you need those extra six months? Why couldn't you meet your target uh, spending? Um, so that's in Nova. And um, I think we've gone over that a few times, but I just wanted to remind you about that. And then the closeout, um, some people were thinking that there wasn't any shelf life to this funding, that they could keep it forever. And that's not true. It's still what we call three-year money. And I'll go over um, what we mean by three-year money. So our target spending is really two years. So when that 1617 funding came out uh, June 1st or July 1st, 2016, we we want to have it spent by June 30th, 2018. That's the two years. Um, with the corrective action plan, we can extend it another six months. So that would be two and a half years to the end of this year, December 31st, 2018. So then what happens after that is we have the Q2 report which will be showing all those activities uh, that have been done, expended by the end of the year, which aligns with you know, the end of the 1617 funding. So when you file that Q2 report, which is on March 1st of 2019, that would show us how much of your 1617 funds have been liquidated. And hopefully all of them have been spent, whether by the target date of June 30th or the extension date of December 31st. Anything that the member reports as unspent in that Q2 report that we'll look at March 1st and then have the consortia director certify by March 31st. If there's anything remaining, we'll ask for it back. We'll invoice that member either through the fiscal agent or if it's direct funded directly through the member. So um, hopefully that makes sense. And Dana asked, do we need to keep funds separate by year or does first in, first out work as long as we spend amounts received prior to the shelf life? So in NOVA, we don't separate it by year. I mean, we will have a visual that shows here's 16, 17 money, here's how much you spent down, here's 17, 18 money, Here's how much you spent down. Oh, and here comes 18, 19 money. Here's all the new money you're getting. Here's the total funding pot that's active. But you don't have to have three budgets and three expenditure reports. All the active funding, you just have to show us one budget, and then you do the expenditure reporting every quarter on those active funds. So I think in the old days, we used to do, you know, you were running three grants simultaneously now it's not a grant so we will just look at three years of funding um and and do the first in first out so hopefully that makes sense dana um you might on your books at your district if it helps you could keep separate years 
but in Nova, we'll have one budget and we'll have um, one expenditure report. And you might be required to do that, um, but it's up to your accounting office and how you're going to treat this and how you're going to be processing it. But in Nova, you have to abide by our rules. There might be accounting rules at the district that you might have to follow, which might be a little different. So let's see. Uh, since these funds, this is from Francisca, since these funds are in the same account, how can we tell which is 167? We haven't kept anything separate. So for our records, Francesca, we have Nova that first in, first outs the money. So we know how much funding you got for 1617. Any expenditures you report will automatically be subtracted from the oldest money first. So once you spend down all your 1617 money, then any additional expenditures go to the 1718 money. And once that's all spent down, then any additional expenses go towards the 1819 money. Now, at your local level, they might want you to track that separately because Nova, because of our first in, first out, that works at the state level. But locally, they might want to have you do it differently. In SACS, if you're a K-12 district, you might have to report that a little differently. We don't get into that. Those are, you know, if you, if you report to CDE, um, there are certain requirements. If you're a college, there are certain requirements in budget and accounting manual. Um, so you still have to follow all those regs and requirements and general accounting principles. But for NOVA and the adult ed grants, for our purposes at the state level, for tracking it, you do have to report it in NOVA and we'll be tracking it first in, first out. So I would check with your accounting staff to see you know, do I need to separate this out? This is how the state wants it reported, but locally at our district, what do we need to do? Do I need to do anything separate? So hopefully that makes sense. And okay, I'm going to move on. Um, okay, so this just reiterates the closeout. Q2 expenses are due March 1st, like I said, consortium approval 331. So we'll start closing these funds out in April. So you'll be required to do kind of a closeout certification of the 1617 funds. And then um, in late March, early May, we'll be invoicing um, to try to get those monies back. And then state accounting offices will close their books for 1617 funding in June 2019. So if you total that all up, that's three years. The last six months is really spent the accounting and the closing out and the finalizing of the bookkeeping. So it's really three-year money, uh, but the breakdown is we have it targeted at two years. We give you a six-month extension if you file corrective action, and then the last six months is a closing out and um, getting money back if it's not spent, those kind of things. OK, let's see. I think we had a few more questions. Uh, if all money is spent for 1617 and data accountability, even if there was carry, no action is needed, correct? So yeah, if all your 1617, now remember, data accountability is in a different system. So if everything's spent, you don't have to do anything. It just will show that you've been spent down. So if you've been keeping up on your expenses, been spending the money as it comes in, you have no problem. And Francesca says, so I assume we have spent our money down. I had asked that before, and they had said no. Well, all, everybody can go into Nova. So Francesca, if you want to send an email through TAP, you want to ask, is my money spent down? We can look at that. We can show you how to look at that. It shouldn't be a problem. And then maybe that can give you reassurances if things are the way you think they should be. So we can help you with that. Just uh, work back through TAP, and we can take care of that. So Carrick says, our Carrick, oh, one of our Carrick men. 
what happens to 16 million that is returned to the AEP office? So that goes to the general fund. We don't like to put money back in the general fund. We can't reprogram it. It's um, not our money to do anything with. So unfortunately, what I would do, and I think you guys do have a process at Carrick and other consortiums do, is you have those targets well in advance. So if you know somebody's not spending their money and you know that it's going to be a problem later on and it might go back to the state and general fund and nobody benefits, that you're able to reallocate it with enough time so your other members can spend down that funding funding without penalizing that member that couldn't spend down. That's why in the CFAD, you get no less than the prior year and you don't get penalized um, if later on in the year you reallocate and things like that. So that flexibility gives everybody the opportunity to say, you know, that building we were thinking of building or that lab we were going to do, it just fell through. I got all this money. And so, you know, I want to give it to the other members. Let's uh, do a budget revision and an allocation amendment. Then we can move that money around knowing that next year I'm still going to get that same amount. So those kind of things can happen. We know uh, we like the flexibility of this program. So um, let's see if we have any. We got all those questions. Nicole, anything to add on that? No, I think you covered it. Thanks, Neil. Okay. All right. And then here is... Um, so Nicole alluded to this earlier, the 1819 member budget and work plan. It's the same as last year. I mean, they just have to program it, but it's going to be the same process. You'll click on the strategies listed in the annual plan. The budget will be based on object codes. And this is for inland, separate line for indirect at the member level. And another reminder, don't combine the indirect for member with the consortia admin if you are a member holding funds for the consortia activities or consortia level activities. Please place it on a different light item so it doesn't get combined. So any questions about, I mean, Nicole doesn't have screenshots to show you yet. Um, we'll go over this as soon as it's ready and we'll have another webinar to walk you through it. But it's the same as last year. Nicole, there, there's no new things that will be in the member budget and work plan as compared to last year. It's pretty much the same process. Is that correct? Yes, it should be the same process. I, I also want to add um, about the the FIFO and um, knowing where you land um, for your 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 allocation. When we launch these the eighteen nineteen budget, we are supposed to launch the the FIFO dashboard. And the FIFO it's not in Nova yet, but the FIFO dashboard is supposed to display um, where you land with your expenditures in uh, relation to your allocations and how far you've spent down. Um, on your allocation um, years. So, for example, for 1617, the FIFO dashboard will show, will we'll look at your expenditures and kind of use the first in, first out model uh, and kind of show where you land on 1617. Hopefully, most of you are zeroed out for 1617. Um, if not, that's when we'll have to um, issue an invoice. For you to return funds, and that there will be an allocation year closeout process that will occur in the quarter two report period, um, because uh, you have until December 31st to spend your 1617. So it'll be that report period, um, which will then um, we will ask you to confirm what your balance is, and at that point we should definitely have the FIFO dashboard uh, dashboard that will display and show you that information. Thanks, Nicole. So there's been a request, and I don't know, I don't know if, and Nicole, you might have background on this. So they're looking for a second indirect line that they could put the consortia admin, or instead of an indirect line, so you'd have a member indirect line and a consortia admin line. That's way that way they're not mixed. 
I don't know if they're programming that or not. Any update on that? Think, I don't think so. I my understanding is that the consortia admin expenditures should be um, booked in the object code that it applies to. So if it's a salary expense, it goes in that object code. Um, we do have um, a way when you're um, building your budget and you're indicating for that object code for you to check a box to say, okay, this is for the consortia. So um, in some of those instances, you you would create two ob budget cards for that object code. One budget card for the consortia expenses, admin exp expenses that um, that apply to that object code, and the other um, budget card for your member level expenditures that are um, in that object code. Yeah. So maybe the next webinar we'll do a little more. Um work on that, kind of show everybody how to do that. Um, John did have a question. He said, with the carryover model, who is still using program years in their fiscal budget lines? I mean, that would be up to local accounting if you have spreadsheets or ledgers at your local office that they're separating. But it is apportionment. It's not a grant. So I don't know if they would be Treating it like that, but they might be doing program year budgeting. I mean, when we do our closeout, we are closing out that program year amount. So, what you got in 16 17, you're certifying that all this money got spent and we're closing it out, and there's no money, uh, or if there is any remaining funds, we're going to recapture that. So, we're kind of using the program year um, methodology just for closeout. So there is still a need a little bit, as you can see, because how else would we know if there's unspent funds out there? Um, so that's why when Nicole says the dashboard will be a good tool, you can monitor how you're doing um, in the allocations that you're receiving every year, how well you're spending down. So Nicole, anything else to add on that? No, thanks, Neil. Okay, let's see. Oh, now this is our last slide and we're only at an hour. So start thinking of questions. Um, so I just wanted to remind everyone that we've put draft guidance out on the three-year plan. It's been in the last new uh, two newsletters. And Veronica, do you offhand, I'm not, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I know last week we only had one comment. Have we received any additional comments from the field on the guidance? Just one more comment. Okay, so so we're staying consistent, one comment a week. <laughs> but we do want you guys to look at that guidance and see if it'll work for you. Um, I know some of you have already gone through the process, you're saying like, oh, well, this doesn't help me. I'm already kind of worked my way through the process. Or maybe you haven't started, so you don't know where to start. Or some of you are in the middle. So please take a look at um, the uh, the uh, draft directive. Uh, Veronica's going to put a link in there. And Inland said they're going to give us comments. And Carrick said they're meeting today. So that's good. That's Nice to know that people are paying attention to us, uh, that they are reading the newsletter. So, um, so if you're, some of you are already taking part in the training cohorts for human centered design. Those started earlier this month. Some started back in the spring. Um, if we do have additional interest, we can do mo more cohorts later on this year. Um, so just remember, member resources required for a three-year plan will be available through NOVA, part of the, oh, okay. So um, when you're looking at the three-year planning guidance, one of the requirements is to list out all the funds that your members are leveraging. So we're designing in NOVA the ability to capture that, but it won't be required. 
required, and we've kind of gone this over this in other webinars, but we won't have that available for input until March of next year because of delays in hours of instructions. The colleges don't get that information until after the re recalculation of FTES in February. So um, that's why March is the date that we're going to re be reporting not only hours of instruction as required in the budget bill, but uh, expenses or operational costs by program area. So we're, we're working on that right now, and we probably sh will have um, screenshots and um, graphs of what that's going to look like probably in November, November, December, and we can start training on it maybe by the beginning of the year because that's going to be very critical information that we need um, and that's requested by the legislature. So with that, and of course we always have the website, all this great stuff is on the website, and you can always contact TAP for technical assistance or additional um, help or where to find things. We do have a few questions. So this is the question part. Let's see, I gotta go back because there was a few. Um, okay. This is from Beatrice. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Okay. At the fiscal agent level, would it be helpful for the 5% admin to have a separate budget funding source and then report it in the 7,000? You could do that if that works for you. That would be sufficient. That way it separates it out. Um, that would be helpful, you know, because some of you will have to explain this stuff in a public meeting. And so you, you've you got to be able to separate things out to show members of your consortia, as well as members of the public, as well as partners, how you're funding this stuff. So the easier, uh, the better way, or, or the, um, you can separate it out of NOVA, and you can explain it to people in your public meetings a lot better. Uh, John adds, also, the way NOVA is calculating indirect thresholds and the way in which we roll over funds from one area to the next, NOVA's let us take indirect on the roll over funds. And I think that's okay, John, because it's your indirect rate for the, for the year. And if that's a problem, you know, I don't think there's a problem with taking indirect on carryover funds because you haven't spent it. Um, let's think about that. I don't think it's a problem, but if it is, let me know. We didn't think it was an issue. But if someone sees that, that if you haven't spent funds and you're carrying it over, is that a problem to take indirect on those funds that are unspent and carried over to the next year? I don't see that as an issue, but if it is, let me know. Uh, let's see, Annabelle, are we still in time to jump into the current human center design cohort training? Um, you know, you can send TAP an email on that. I think they've started the second cohort, um, but you can get on a waiting list for the next one. But Annabelle, what I would do is email TAP and they can contact the human center design people and get a response for you. And John adds, so I take indirect last year on my total allocation, then I roll a remainder over this year. Curry was added to my current list, gives me. So I guess, yeah, John, I do see your point. So if you took the indirect and didn't spend the funds, and then you rolled it over, you could take the indirect again so it doesn't mean you didn't spend the funds. You could still take the indirect. So I, I see where you're, you're going with that. So if I'm a crafty district, I would say make sure we get our indirect this year. And then 
make sure you don't spend all that money because the remaining rollover, I'm going to get indirect on that next year. So I think so you have Neil? a point. Yes. Neil, I'm sorry. I have, I have a question. So I, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, I, I assumed that you can only spend the indirect based on your total direct costs. So it's based on your expenditures, the amount that you take. Um, is that correct? I hope it's correct because otherwise we'd be in trouble. <laughs> that, 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 that's my understanding is that you uh, charge your indirect um, in proportion of the, what you're spending. So the the amount of indirect that you're able to charge is based on the, the your expenditures of your direct costs. Uh, I could be wrong, you know, I'm not a fiscal expert, but that's always been my understanding of it. Yeah, that does make sense. And John added, we can calculate current year indirect, but red flags in NOVA are meaningless and not a good indicator. Yeah, I think we probably need to relook at those red flags. We had We had some issues, Nicole and I, with the programming on the indirect flags. Um, so maybe that's something we can work on um, with the field to maybe better flag things in Nova. And I think that's something that Nicole keeps bringing up of creating triggers or flags in Nova that would prevent bad things from happening. Right, Nicole? Yes, I'm doing my best. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, and Nicole Carrick says their fiscal person says indirect was only charged on direct costs. Okay, and then Jacques adds, I think some districts take indirect in one big chunk as calculated on front in their budget. That's where the double dipping can occur. Hopefully not. I don't know. We'll keep we'll keep an eye on this. And John adds, percentage of expenditures, not percentage of total budget. Okay, you guys got it right. That's right. All right. So, any other questions that people may have about NOVA, about three-year plan, budget revisions, expenditure report? Okay, so Diana is adding best way to uh, contact rather than calling an email. Thank you, Diana, for that public address announcement. So, okay, Nicole, anything else to add? We were. This is probably the most time we've ever had on a webinar that uh, uh, extra I, time. I want to thank folks for all their patience. We, we have had a large number of bugs and glitches that we've been working through and you know unfortunately it has been it has taken some time to get those resolved. So thank you all for your patience. Thank you all for your feedback. Um, thank you to Ver Veronica and all of her uh, support with the help uh, desk tickets that come through. Um, she really does a great job of filtering those requests um, and tries to tackle as many as she can um, before forwarding them on. So I, I really appreciate that. Um, so, so thanks. <laughs> great. And thank you, Nicole, for being the Maytag repair person for Nova, sitting there waiting for the call. You're not really sitting because you're so busy. Um, <laughs> We appreciate all your technical support, customer service, and responsiveness in dealing with uh, getting this new system up and running. Um, I don't think the other programs that use NOVA realize the detailed work that has been done on the adult ed side. And um, Nicole has been a large part of that. So a couple of questions just coming in before we sign off. Uh, FAS says, where can we go 
to get more information on the three-year plan. Um, Veronica, that's in the newsletter because it's a draft directive. We have put some resources on, if you go on the website under, I think it's administrators planning, if you go under state, there's a lot of resources there and um, regional as well as local. But you got to check the newsletter for that draft announcement. Um, okay, and I think that's, oh, and there's the link right there. So we don't want to sign off. So uh, FAS, if you want to look at that link that Veronica just posted, that's where you would find that. Plus, look at the newsletter. That's where the draft um, guidance is listed for comments. And then once it um, we get comments back, we make changes, we'll post it um, as a regular guidance on the website. So right now, we don't want to pass, post draft guidance because then people will think it's for real and run with it. So we'll be making changes to it based on your comments that you have, what, another week? I think, Veronica, did we give them till Tuesday of next week to respond, I think? Okay, and there's where the newsletters are posted. And I think we gave them till the 18th, and then we're going to have a webinar on Thursday to kind of go over there's another plug right there. If you want more information about the three-year planning guidance, we'll have a webinar next week on Thursday, September 20th. We'll have, I think, Greg Hill will be joining me. We'll kind of walk through the template, walk through the tables, walk through the guidance, uh, answer any questions, maybe review some of the comments that we're getting. Um, and then Veronica, of course, on the ball as usual, um, posted the registration for that webinar next week on the 20th that you can sign up right now um, and participate in that three-year planning guidance webinar. It'll kind of be a kickoff just to walk you through it. It won't be, you know, how to. It'll just be introducing the three-year planning guidance because we still have to run all this by the field teams, and we'll have a more intense uh, discussion at the director's event on September 28th. And then after that, once we get all the input, you'll see the um, official guidance come out probably in early October. All right, with that, thanks to everyone. Thank you for all your questions. I like the rapport of going back and forth on stuff and rehashing. Hopefully other people didn't get too upset by that, but that's kind of how we do things. Uh, we're very open to feedback, and we like to uh, discuss things openly and transparent. Um, so we appreciate all the comments in the chat and all the information shared. And John, as we close out, listed SACS. Procedure 915 indirect indirect rate is based on determined by dividing agency's indirect costs by the majority of its other expenditures or base costs. So thank you for adding that, John. And with that, we will close. And I'll turn it over to Veronica. You guys have a great weekend. And we'll get back at it next week. All right. Thank you, Neil. And thank you, Nicole, for today's webinar. I have posted the, regi um, the registration link for all of our upcoming um, webinars and in-person trainings. In addition to next week's three-year planning overview webinar, TAP is also hosting a Pathways to Successful Employment Outcomes for Adults with Disabilities. So if you're interested in learning about um, Pathways for Adults with Disabilities, please be sure to register and attend that webinar as well. In addition, we have posted about eight, excuse me, 11 different training sessions for three-year planning process data and accountability regional trainings. The trainings will be held all the way up to Red Bluff, down to San Diego, and everywhere else in between. So please be sure to check out the registration website and sign up for one of those in-person regional trainings. I will close the webinar now, and when I do, the evaluation will appear on your screen. Please be sure to check out this evaluation and take one or two minutes to fill it out. We do use the results of these evaluations to make changes and improvements into our webinar structure 
content and address any technical assistance or professional development needs you may have. So please be sure to fill out the webinar as soon as the evaluation. Thank you all very much for your time and have a great day.